Hey guys, Shea Bear 1000 here. Today, we're going to be pulling some codes on this Suburban here for my niece. See if we can straighten out some issues for her. Hang tight, let's get into it. Okay guys, what we got here is this little Actron. It's a code scanner. Uh, it's the OBD2 pocket scan. It does a great job for all I need it to do. It's uh, the CP9125. 9125. And it plugs in with this right here down underneath the dash. Which I will show you right now. Let me get my camera off the tripod. I got my uh, lens cap on there. Now right under there. That's where this thing plugs into. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Just like that. Okay. Now I know it's going to come up some, some codes for the uh, O2 sensors. It's a lot of people call them knock sensors. But it's going to come up with a code for them. She has them. I will put them in for her. But now we're going to turn the key on. And actually, as you can see, there's a problem somewhere because this thing is not reading anything. Okay, so we need to find out. There must be a fuse somewhere because that should be, even with the key off, it should be reading something. It'll come across the screen. Um, so let's go ahead. And I'm going to see if I can find a fuse or something that's bad with this thing. And then, um, then I'll get back with you as soon as I find out why the scanner's not working in here. Uh, there's something, something causing it. Probably a fuse. I don't know. I know she said she's had them scanned before. That's how she knew the O2 sensors were bad, but... As you can see right now, it's not reading anything. And I know it's not the scanner, so uh, let me check it out and I'll let you know what it is. Okay guys, we're gonna check the fuses. I have the key on. I wanna put this onto the ground, which is handy because right there's the ground of the battery. This is an 03 Chevy Suburban. Um, if I remember right, those work through the cigarette lighter. Okay, I know the radio works. I know everything works, but I don't know about the cigarette lighter, so I'm going to check it first. Okay, we got it on one side. Well, actually, I can see it's blown. Okay, so. All right, let's go ahead and pull that out. Yep, it sure is. It's blown. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is blown. Alright, so. Got a couple fuses in my pocket here. Takes a 15. There's a 15. I brought out a 10 and a 15 just in case because I didn't know which one it would be. I'm glad it wasn't a 20 because I didn't bring a 20 out. Okay, now let's go in here and let's check the code scanner. And see if it works because if I remember right my buddy had an 05 Chevy maybe it was an 04 that did the same thing and the cigarette lighter fuse is what caused it so let's go ahead and plug this in well let's shut it off turn the key off first all right let's plug this in what we got there it is pocket scan all right, now we're going to turn the key on again. All right, don't start it, just turn the key on. And we're going to push read. And now it's reading the codes. Like I said, it should come up with the O2 sensors. Okay, so there's a... I'm gonna write this down and then we'll go in and we'll look in the book and see what it what it is. So we got a, a P0102. I think that's a 
oxygen sensor. P0332. 332. Now the higher end ones, you don't have to look in the book. It'll just tell you what it is. We've got a P0449. I don't know what that was. Something under the dash. All right, so we have three codes. Now let's go in here in front of the fan. Shut this off. Let's go in front of the fan. And we're gonna look these codes up. Okay, again, I'm gonna apologize for the fan, but I had somebody comment one time a while back, well, if you didn't have the damn fan running in the background, I could hear you better. Well, this is why I got the fan running in the background. Yeah, it's only 87, but the real feel is 104. So, and I'm in a garage. So, I can tell you right now that uh, it's hot in here. Okay, so here's the book. This was our dad's scanner. Here's the book. So we're going to look these up. P102 is the first one, which is right here. The MAF or VAF A circuit low input. Okay. So we'll have to check that out. The other one is the P0332. Okay, knock, knock sensor 2, circuit low input, bank 2. Okay, and I'll bet the other one, P0449. EVAP emission control system vent. Okay, so it's a malfunction in that. So I'm going to look these up and see. You know, the MAF sensor, the MAF sensor. Or VAF, A circuit low input. So that's that I'm guessing is what that would cause it to stall out okay so what we're going to do is I'm going to look these up and see what the parts are or see what the prices are on them and um, then we'll go from there um, I'm, I am going to go ahead and put the uh, oxygen sensors in for her. she already has them they're brand new and uh, so that that would cause it to periodically uh, shut down we also have to check the cable which I'll show you when we go back out if I remember what it's doing it doesn't want to go it'll go into park and then you got to push the the gear shift lever back towards the dash to get it to to lock in right um, so I think the cables are stretching I think they're a hundred bucks online but first let me look these up and I'll be back with you and I'll tell you what we're going to do from there. I may have to give her a call see if she wants me to order them or what. So let me look them up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I was looking around on this thing and the MAF sensor is right here. Okay. And I came out to look at it and I thought, well, I'll just clean it before I, you know, because they're like 50 bucks. You see that? This thing is unplugged for some reason, and I don't know why. I'm going to have to try to get a hold of her and find out why this thing is unplugged. And if I can't get a hold of her, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll go ahead and pull it out and clean it. I'll show you how to do that. Um, and uh, we'll put it in, clear the code, and see if it comes back. So, uh, let me see, where is it? can't see it from here um, but I don't know why this would be unplugged also the other the evap it's down I don't know if I can get you under here um, what it is is a solenoid and it's like 50 bucks uh, I don't think I can get you Uh, 
it's up above the spare tire I was going to show you that but uh, it's the evap what that does is evaporate um, fumes and stuff like that so let's see if it's got any there's no pressure in it it's a solenoid so I'm gonna to have to check that out again it's like 50 bucks and I may need to get a a um, what do you call it a, a pigtail because they I guess they've upgraded the pigtails on them but we're gonna deal with, with that a little bit later right now I gotta to try to get a hold of her and find out why this is unplugged so let me get a hold of her I'm gonna go ahead and clean it anyway because it's, it's real simple just loosen that clamp there that clamp there of course you unplug it that's already done for us thank you this is a Delphi okay um, and then this will come out but let me try to get a hold of her first and we'll find out why that's unplugged okay so I called my niece she has no idea why it's unplugged um, they don't she don't know if it happened when they had to put a new alternator or start or something I don't know why that would have been unplugged why they would have had to take that off maybe the alternator but I don't know if you can see that just after the last clip when I was on my way in the garage it started pouring so we're gonna have to wait but I will show you how to clean that and uh, she did say it does want to you know stall out and it does uh, it has used its fuel economy's gotten bad which you know it's going to so uh, it's not it's not plugged in so she said after they did something to it that uh, it, it started running bad. It, it kind of hesitates on takeoff, which I noticed that too. Uh, so, as soon as it quits raining, we'll go ahead and pull that off. I'll show you how to clean it. Uh, they make special, special stuff to clean that. Um, the, ma the mass airflow, MAF, mass airflow sensor. <coughs> excuse me they make special stuff for it but I've always used this stuff on them it's just uh, electric uh, cleaner electronic cleaner you know for switches plugs and whatnot it doesn't leave any residue a lot of guys say that you can use carburetor cleaner <coughs> excuse me or you know uh, intake intake cleaner um, sometimes they will leave residue so I've always used that stuff on stuff like that because we're going to be spraying it into the uh, into the plug and everything because it's been unplugged for a while apparently um, she's going to call me back and let me know about the evap valve or the evap solenoid um, see what we're going to do with that and the O2 sensors knock sensors she calls them um, we're going to go ahead and put those in but uh, so that's going to take care of two codes there and um, then she'll have the, the other code which can cause it to, to you know not run efficiently like it should so she needs to get that part too so as soon as it quits raining might have quit now as soon as it quits raining we'll head back out there to the truck we'll go ahead and get that taken care of at least get that done we'll clear the code on it start it up make sure the code stays off um, like I said there's a reason they unplugged it I don't know why maybe they just forgot to plug it back in that's something you don't want to forget about because uh, it, it really it really messes with your fuel economy and the performance of your engine is just you know it's terrible so let's get on it okay I gotta try to hurry on this because well it's kind of sprinkling but I'm expecting more rain so I don't know if they had this off to change the alternator which is right over there or not but it's a standard screwdriver or I'm in this case I'm using a 5 16 nut driver but I brought a straight screwdriver out just in case okay it looks pretty clean but 
we're going to go ahead and clean it anyway. If I can get this thing off of here. It's loose enough. here I don't know if you can see that it'll tell you which way it, it needs to flow it says flow with an arrow that way so that means it's going to go like this when you put it back in so let's go ahead yeah it'll, it looks pretty clean there's there's some gunk there back you out a little bit here there's some gunk right there. Um, you can see, I've actually seen them clogged up before. This is not real bad, but I'm gonna take this in the garage and I'm gonna clean it out, blow it out with compressed air, and then we'll go from there. Hang tight, guys. Okay, we got it in this little bucket here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just spray that around there nice. I'm going to go to this side. Just like that. And spray that. I hope that didn't get on camera. Now that's all we're going to do with this. I don't think I'm going to hit it with compressed air because that little hunk of stuff was gone now. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it on the truck. I'm just going to do the same way as I took it off. I'm going to put this on, put this on, tighten the clamps. And then we'll plug it in. We'll see what, what goes on after that. So yeah, it doesn't look real bad actually this outside is not a necessity I'm just doing it to do it all right now let me take it out put it on the truck because it is still sprinkling and then we'll uh, we'll try to clear that code start it up see how it runs and see if that code comes back all right i got it put in let's turn the key on let it do its little thing there for a minute this is the this is the one that um the po102 so we're going to erase that we're going to hold this erase and then we're going to hold again five seconds and it should be erasing it. It's done. Now I'm going to hit read. No codes. That cleared all of them. Alright. Well let's go ahead and unplug this. Well let's shut it off. Unplug this. And let's start it up. No check engine light. It cleared all of them. Hmm. Well. Okay, let me take it for a ride up the street. And I'll come back. And we'll see if it's... And we'll, if it hasn't come on, we'll shut it off, start it back up, and see if it comes on. Okay, guys, we're back. Man, this thing is a scalded dog, boy. For big old Suburban, this thing will shit and get, man, I'm telling you. 
Okay, so this one is talking about this thing. You gotta push it up and forward. Now, I'm not gonna be able to work with that today. Um, well, as you can see, it's pouring down rain again. So let's shut this off. Let's wait a minute. Let's start it up and see if the check engine light comes back on. No, no lights. There it is, it came on. All right, so I'm gonna run these codes again while I'm sitting here and see which one came back. Okay, I checked the codes again. It was the EVAP solenoid sensor. So she's gonna have to have that because it's gonna keep coming back. It hasn't come back yet, but it will. I've started it four or five times. Good running VA here. All right, I'll have to give her a call and let her know what's going on. So let's go to the garage in front of the fan. Okay guys, so that's how you clean an MAF sensor, a MAF sensor. What was that? Did you guys hear that? Sensor, sensor, sensor. Mass airflow sensor. So what I did was, damn it. What I did was, what the hell? <sighs> anyway, <laughs> weird shit going on. Uh, got a story for you at a later date. But, um, so I cleaned it, I cleared them codes. One of them, like I said, came back, which was the uh, PO449, which is the EVAP solenoid. Uh, it came back, I cleared it again, drove it around a while, shut it off, started it, shut it off, started it. After that last clip, I did, you know, it didn't come back, so I drove it around again and it didn't come back. Uh, running like a, like a scared deer, you know. That thing will scat for a big old Suburban, I think it will weigh around 7,000 pounds. You know, so, talking three and a half ton there. But it's going to come back because it's got an issue it's throwing a code for some reason it will come back um you know maybe she can try you know a different gas cap try a new gas cap first that might do it sometimes it does but it's not coming back as any code that that would really relate to except for this you know i mean it can cause it yes but I don't think that's the issue. I think it is the solenoid. So I'm gonna let her know what's going on. At least, you know, it's drivable. Uh, I haven't, as you can see, it's still pouring down rain out there. I haven't got got to check out the, um, to adjust the cables, the shift cables on it yet. So we'll see if she wants to come and get it. We can do that at another time, another date, or if she wants me to you know wait on it to quit raining so I can check that out for her because if she needs cables she might as well get the cables at the same time she gets the um, the uh, evap solenoids so but anyway that's the only code that kept coming back like I said it's off now might go out there and start up might be on it might stay off for a couple months but usually when it's throwing codes like that it is malfunctioning because that's what it says it's a malfunction so could be sticking um, so, you know, uh, I'll let you know if she wants, you know, if she wants to go ahead and do that when she gets apart or whatever, I'll, uh, something on my lens, I will, uh, you know, I'll bring you along for me on that, with me on that one, I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty simple, I think any handyman or woman, lady, I uh, can do it if they're you know if you can change spark plugs and something you can change this thing it's real simple so also yeah if you can change spark plugs starter alternator you know you can clean that mass air that mass airflow sensor the math and not map but math maf mass airflow sensor you can clean that it's, it's simple it went right in real easy so I didn't 
film that because I mean you've seen how it came apart you just and you can't get it wrong it says you know well for one thing it won't go the other way and for another thing it even tells you flow this way so you know uh, but anyway guys here thunder it's pouring out there so I guess I'm done with that truck for today uh, I just got it she's at work I did you know I did talk to her for a little bit but I'll I'll, I'll shoot her out a message and tell her what's going on she'll call me when she gets off so I don't know what time it is right now. I've been out messing around on my buddy's truck. He stopped by. The guy got the tents off of. He stopped by. He's got something keeps blowing. His uh, as soon as you turn the uh, parking lights on, the fuse blows. So he's got a short in it somewhere. Um, it's 135. Okay, cool. So monkey's at work. She's in Mount Dora trying to find her patient. <laughs> so she's quite a ways away from home. Uh, I told her it was pouring here. She said, sunny here. Nah, shut up. <laughs> and we love Mount Dora. If you guys are around Florida, or even if you've been in Florida, you've been to Mount Dora, you know, it's really, it's a really cool little town. We've been there several times, and we love it. All right, guys, so I'm going to close the door down, let some of that air from the inside of the house get out here and cool this down. And I'm um, getting ready to do a follow-up video. It'll be after this one on the smartwatch that we bought at Dollar General. And some people say, oh, he's just not tech savvy. You don't have to be tech savvy. I'll show you what it's doing. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. Thanks for working with me in the rain. And thanks for taking a ride up to the park and around the block and stuff. Appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all take care. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell icon. We'll see you soon. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye-bye.